beginning from verse number 23. Lord Brahma is continuing to explain the various avatars and the next avatar is Lord Ramachandra. Coincidentally, today is Ram Lavi, Lord Ram's birthday, and we have three verses about him spoken by Brahma. So, usually, he is speaking only one verse about one avatar, sometimes two, but now he has increased. And for Lord Ram is three verses, and then for Lord Krishna is going to speak the other ten verses. Because the real purpose of Bhagavatam is to explain about Lord Krishna. But people think that Lord Krishna is different from Lord Ram or Lord Narasimha Dev or Vishnu or Narayan, but he is Swam Bhagwan. He is the complete, perfect, absolute reality which encompasses everything in him. So all avatars they exist in him and therefore it is very difficult to understand also Krishna. Other avatars we read that they have one or two specific pastimes for which they come. Lord Kurma came because he has to hold this mountain on his back. Narsingha Dev came because he has to kill Hiranyakashipu. Vara Avatar came, he uplifted the earth and killed Hiranyasa. But Lord Krishna, he performed many things. There is a whole list whom he killed starting from Putna and then Saktasur, Bakasur, Adasur, Vasbhasur, Vyamasur, so many, Salva, Shishupal. So he stayed for a long period of time. He performed many, many pastimes. He was on earth for 125 years. So there is a lot about him. And before him is Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Ramachandra, he also stayed for a long time. He ruled for 11,000 years on earth. Now people want to have long life these days. And they are inventing Jeritol. But Lord Ramachandra, he ruled for 11,000 years and he did not become old. He was young. Then one day he decided to leave. So he went to Sarya River and he left. And when he left, he left with everybody with him. Ayodhya became completely vacant because nobody wanted to <coughs> live without him. When Lord Ramachandra was leaving, he made a declaration that anybody who wants to come with him, they can all join him. So everybody followed him, including the mosquitoes and flies. <laughs> Nothing was remaining in Ayodhya because even mosquitoes loved him. Usually mosquitoes like human beings anyway, but they may not <laughs> desire to leave the room. Like when you go out of your room and you want to go to another country, the mosquitoes are not going to follow you. They will stay there, they will think you will find another sucker. So Lord Ramachandra, he went with everybody. But he is a straightforward fellow. That is the beauty of Lord Ramachandra. Rama means straight. Krishna means like even in, when you write in Sanskrit, it has a curve under his name. So he is not straight at all. Their characters seem completely opposite to each other. Lord Ramachandra had one wife. Krishna had God knows how many. <laughs> Lord Ramachandra 
never had any girlfriends and lord krishna <coughs> he was only having girlfriends gopis they said he had 3 crores or sometimes 300 crores and there's no we never hear that lord ramchandra he danced he was walking straight it is said that when he will walk he will not even look up he is very serious he walks straight hardly he smiles and doesn't joke and krishna he doesn't walk straight he doesn't stand straight he doesn't talk straight he is talking to this person his eyes are somewhere <laughs> Ramachandra never told lies in his life. And Krishna, even when he has eaten the earth and it was in his mouth, his mother asked that, have you eaten earth? He was a small boy and Krishna flatly denied. He <laughs> says, me? How can I eat earth? Why will I do that? There's plenty of food in the house. We are making nice halwa every morning. So he says, but all these boys are saying that you are eating. He says, they are all liars. <laughs> he says, Naham bhakshitva namba sarva mitya vishans. And my mother, I have not eaten. They are all liars. <laughs> Boldly he said. So, Lord Ramachandra went to forest. Although his father did not really ask him. His father didn't ask Lord Ram to go to the forest. It was that father has given a boon to Lord Ram's stepmother that she could ask anything from him when, whenever she likes. And when it was time for Lord Ramachandra's coronation, then she asked that Lord Ram should be sent to forest and his, her son Bharata should be made the king. So when Lord Rama heard it, he left by himself. So he was so obedient that he did not even need, because he knew that his father will never say it. How can his father who had so much love for him ask him to go to forest? But he understood that if I don't go, then my father's word will become false. So he left and we he know about Krishna. He was in so much in love with people here in Vrindavan. Then he went to Mathura. He liked the city very much, the atmosphere. Generally people when they go from village to city they like it, if it is a nice city. Because here in Vrindavan he was going around barefoot in the forest after the cows with thorn hitting and hardly any dress on his body, just one dhoti, not even umbrella, just taking one black blanket if it is raining, putting on his head. When he went to Mathura, he liked the opulence. He says, why go back? He killed his own maternal uncle. And Although he has promised very much to everybody here, he says, yes, I will come back, I will come back. He sent his father, Nanda Maharaj, also back. He says, you please go tell my mother I am coming back soon. Never came back. So he keeps his words nicely. So their character are very much different. And this is also a contrast that after Lord Ram there is Krishna. Many times the avatars they are presented as if there is a progression. So progression is there in consciousness. It is not that physically they appeared like that. That first Kurma came and then and Matsya, Kurma and then Varaha. It is not necessarily that they have come because there is no such order. But there is definitely a progression in their appearance because 
the purpose of avatara is to is to propagate dharma religion and real purpose is to give the message of pure devotion and that was given by lord krishna and you know the famous statement that in love and war there are no rules and because krishna has to give the message of love and not only that he talked but he lived it therefore there are no law in his life although he is called shastra chakshu that he has the eye of scripture means he never deviates from the scripture he says in bhagavad gita tasmat shastram pramanante kare kare vyavasthito gyatva shastra vidhanam tam kare kartum hai rasi ya shastra vidhi mutsujya vartate kama karata na sa shanti vaatma ki na sukhna parangate he lays so much stress about shastra but shastra also has a purpose behind it shastra is not just to be followed as a rule it also has purpose and the purpose is to teach us the pure love of god so for that lord krishna appeared but to come to that level first we have to become regularized in our life and therefore lord ramachandra came to give the message of following the maryada the limits of scriptures the law given by the scriptures unless we regularize our life it is very difficult to understand past times of lord krishna they are beyond any law because love does not have any rule like that and if you want to understand krishna then we have to know this fact and then only his past times make sense otherwise it looks like that he is quite a reckless person in his behavior i don't know what he is going to do so the full importance of lord ramachandra to transcend shastra as they say that bhagavatam says nirgrantha nirgrantha api urukrame kurvanti hitkim bhakti ittham bhut guna hari that lord krishna's gunas qualities past times are such that even those who have gone beyond the scriptural injunctions become attracted to him but to go beyond first we have to be within so sometimes people just try to break the principles and they think that they will attain highest because they are following ragana they mistake that ragana means not following any vidhi and that is not the meaning of ragana it means following the vidhi with natural attraction and that is the best following so lord ramachandra is called maryada purushottam or the supreme person who is personification of the righteousness the limits of religion his activities are anukarniya they can be imitated krishna's activities are anusarniya they have to be followed what he says you cannot imitate him because imitation is just done without understanding so lord ramachandra he appeared on this day ram navami this is the ninth day in chaitra shukla paksha and he was in treta yuga born to dasrath and kausalya and his name means one who is 
pleasing to everybody lok ramnath ram ramayati ti ram so lord brahma he is speaking about him in this verse and since when he was speaking this avatar was going to be still appear in future so therefore he will speak in future tense now he says asmat prasad sumukha kalaya kalesha ikshwanku vamsavatir gurur nideshe तिष्ठन वन सदयतावेश यस्ुद्ध दशकंदर आरती मरच से दट लॉर्ड हू इज अस्मद प्रसाद सुमुख ही वॉन्टेड टू गिव हिज प्रसाद हिज ब्लैसिंग्स टू अस मीन्स ब्रह्म स्पीकिंग सो ही अपियर्ड इन द डायन